Okay, so the next storytelling pitfall that you will be tempted to fall into is this idea of misrepresentation. And this is where the findings of your, um, your evaluation or your analysis, um, you're supposed to make it digestible and easy to understand. You'll have some sort of executive summary that everybody's gonna look at, and that's what they'll remember. But you want to make sure that that's not the only thing that, re that they remember and it becomes kind of the soundbite because it can lead to issues. For instance, there's this um, famous book by Malcolm Gladwell um, from a few years ago where it, it's all about kind of fun Malcolm gladwell -y stories. Um, one of the, m the most famous stories from this Outliers book is this idea of the 10,000 hour rule, which you have likely heard of. Um, what Malcolm Gladwell argues is that this 10,000 hour rule is the magic number of greatness. That basically, if you practice something for 10,000 hours, you become an expert at it. So he talks about how the Beatles, um, before they became the Beatles, um, worked in Germany in a whole bunch of different bars, just doing like covers of different rock groups and just playing in bars, but they played for thousands of hours and then became experts and became world famous. And so the conclusion from Outliers here is, if you want to be an expert in something, get 10,000 hours of practice and then you will be an expert. Um, everybody loves this 10,000 hour rule because it's easy to remember. It's kind of this magical thing. You can say, I'm going to, um, I want to learn how to golf. So I'm going to golf for 10,000 hours and then I'll be the next Tiger Woods or whatever. Um, and that sounds neat and, and great. It fits in a podcast, fun. Um, it's based on actual peer reviewed research. So this is a paper from the Psychological Review in 1993 where um, these researchers find that basically if you want to have expertise, you need to practice for 10 years or on average um, 10,000 hours. But that was not their actual real life finding. That was kind of a finding in there, but it was wildly misinterpreted by Gladwell and others as kind of this universal 10,000 hour rule. And so what they find, what they've had to do later in the years since this 10,000 hour rule has taken off, is they've had to publish a whole bunch of stuff saying, no, stop, this is not actually a thing. Um, where they say like, um, there's this simplistic view of our work on the internet that suggests that anyone who has accumulated some number of hours in practice becomes an expert and a champion. But that is not actually the case. Um, so what they find instead, and what they keep trying to argue, is that that is not true. Um, what is actually true is that 10,000 is an average which means for some people, you could practice for 2,000 hours. Some people could practice for 30,000 hours, and then it becomes, um, then they become an expert. The quality of the practice matters. Um, if you're just kind of plinking away at a piano for 15 minutes a day, um, and then add that up to 10,000 hours, that's not actually going to make you a concert pianist. Um, you have to have high quality focused practicing and not just not just get a whole bunch of time under your belt. That doesn't work. Um, and then finally, there are other factors, um, such as talent. Um, and it's not just like plinking away. You have to have some proclivity towards sportsy things. Um, for instance, um, I stink at basketball. If I go and practice basketball for 10,000 hours, I will not be the next LeBron James. It does not work like that. Um, I lack a whole bunch of other things, other factors beyond just the number of hours spent shooting a basketball into a hoop. It doesn't work like that. Um, but it's been very popular to think about this 10,000 hour rule. So um, main finding here is when you're talking about your results, be narrative, make it accessible to people, but don't be too narrative. Don't lead people to a specific outcome and say, therefore, practice for 10,000 hours. Don't do that. Also temper expectations. If you notice that people are starting to say, this is the magic 10,000 hour rule. Or if you do like a regression discontinuity and you say, um, having this program causes an increase of 10 points, people are gonna jump on that and say, this causes 10 points universally. But you know that that is a local average treatment effect for just people in the bandwidth who are just the compliers. And so you need to temper that down and say, it's just for people who perform right around the cutoff, like don't apply this universally. Temper your expectations down as you're telling the story here so that you don't turn into the next uh, 10,000 hour rule. 